Oh, actually I cannot. Interesting. Yeah, so Yankees, just so you know, you are the only one recording because when you start recording to the cloud, I cannot record to the computer anymore. So that's how it is. I cannot hear you. Okay. Good. All right, um, then, so I will just uh, then repeat the, the first question. Um, um, I've, uh, this is a research initiative and uh, the event is organized to collect insights and information in the Brazilian and uh, South American food system and hear um, consumption, about consumption behaviors, different patterns, what can influence uh, nutrition inequalities and um, gaps worldwide. Um, and um, and I just would like to ask your consent that uh, we record this session and okay. um, your um, your input will be part of the research initiative. Can you please uh, either send the reaction with a thumbs up or write in the chat or just say out loud that you uh, consent us. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Okay, Gabriela, are you also fine with the, with the recording? Thank you. Amazing. All right, I think then, uh, Maria, I will follow up with you. And Marina, if you could just write it in the chat, if you are fine with the recording, that would be amazing. Um, okay, I can see you. And... All right, so as you can see, this is a hybrid event and our colleagues in Porto Alegre is ha are having an actual dinner, which makes me very sad as well because I would love to have the food that they prepare, but I'm, uh, I can guarantee you that we will have some um, very delicious conversations here as well. <laughs> and um, and uh, first of all, before we dial in uh, with the uh, with the other room. Um, I would like to maybe hear from um, Carmen. Um, what, what are you doing? What is your relation to food? And why were you so interested about the, the conversation? Uh, thank you, Julia. Um, well, I'm originally from, from Mexico. Can you hear me well? Not so much. Better like this? Yes. Um, I'm originally from Mexico. And I have been working for the last 15 years in issues related with climate change. And coming from very like an industry and energy uh, field. And lately, due to coincidences, I have been working more related to the agriculture. So the, the relationship between climate change, agriculture, and how the agricultural practices can be are a problem, but also an opportunity of a solution. So um, that's one side. And then I moved. So I'm curious to know more about the food systems in general because of that. And then I moved three years ago to Guatemala and uh, coming from Mexico City. So for me, like the, the difference from coming to, from a huge city, uh, being and I have a city eyes of the world, and coming to a rural area because I live in a in a small town. Um, in three minutes from my house, I have a coffee plantation. So I I've started wondering, like more in like in depth about the connection of um, a food system, climate change, but also now with the nutrition because Guatemala has a really poor and low nutrition levels. And I still don't get it why, if the land here is so wealthy. Mm -hmm. You can, like, the land is amazing because we have a lot of volcanoes. So the, literally the soil is full of nutrients and minerals. And uh, to get food from the market and from the agriculture is, is very cheap, like good food, and still, um, people are, are bad, um, are, are not fed well, uh, very low uh, nutrition levels, 
like really, really bad. I think it's the worst in our whole Latin America. And uh, so, and also like I have another, like I love, I love food and I love cooking. So I have another like lingering question in my head of how come Guatemala lost their food culture? Because mm -hmm. you can get all the ingredients as you can find it in Mexico, but there is no as rich culture in terms of food than in Mexico. So I have this now three, three ideas of climate change, food and agriculture and nutrition. And I don't know how to maybe merge and do something about it. So um, I found it really interesting, all the food system conversation. And um, so I was, I was curious to know uh, about like you guys that you have been doing research. What are you thinking or talking about looking for solutions? Because I am in that process of merging the things that I'm interested in. Very, very interesting. So did you already have some conversations um, with consumers in Guatemala? Do you have um, any sense of maybe the Western diet having an influence on their own? And does that uh, relate to, to their nutrition? Or do you see any consumption habits or patterns what you think can lead to this gap between the very rich environment who could actually provide all the nutrients what they need yet having deficiencies. Did you have any um, any uh, observations about that? Yes, like um, I started to learn the Majin language here. So to have deeper conversations with, with the people. And um, so there's, um, as soon as they start to get more money, so they think it's better to buy foods from the shop. Mm -hmm. And the shop has only uh, Chetos, Frito-Lay, Pepsi, uh, all these packaged foods. So, and they, they like, there's a lot of people that they only, their main language is the Maya and with few knowledge of the Spanish. So they won't, they won't read the, the labels they won't have a nutrition knowledge about what they are eating. They only feel that they are wealthier and more cool and better than instead of having maybe some tortillas with cheese mm -hmm. or avocado, they will have, they're so much better buying um, some like sneakers. And you can get a lot of American stuff here in Guatemala, surprisingly. So you can get the sneakers um, easily or like huge things. So uh, for me, it's a sense of, of that, that they prefer to spend the money on that because that makes them feel better. And mm -hmm. so would you say they, they, they achieve a kind of social status yes. when buying yes. Western foods? Okay. Yes. And I think that's the main the main thing is the social status because they are they have money to buy, mm -hmm. and because there is a lot of um, it's a very racist uh, society. Half of the population is indigenous, and the other half of the, like is, is like some like white people. So if you eat as well, so it's a, a social status as well of not eating uh, indigenous foods because it's more, um, yeah, it's better, it's better if you are having a pizza or a burger, even if it's well done, it's just the, the social status that you are, you are not poor and you are not uh, indigenous. That's... Um... Okay, wow. <laughs> you, you touched on some uh, points. So that's very interesting, thank you. Maybe Julia, we uh, should just start with the, the, yeah, the question one I by think, one. Yeah, so I was, um, I just got a message that they would be ready to say hi, but I, um, I would say I will start sharing the questions and these questions are prepared to start the conversation. So now I would like everyone to somehow contribute. If you feel like you wanna write in the chat, that's also fine, whatever makes you feel uh, better. Uh, but, uh, and these will be questions you will see which are very easy to answer. So we made it sure that a consumer, a farmer and everyone 
can have a say um, around them. So I will start sharing my screen. Um, so our very first question, can you see my screen now? Good, let me just, yeah, there we go. So how was your grandma used to eat and how are you eating differently today? I can always announce the pe person who should answer. How, how shall we do this to avoid always this awkward silence when no one wants to jump? Oh, I think Evie is there. Hi, Just one sec. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, and you? Very good, very good. We were not sure if we should start with the questions, so let me stop sharing. And um, yes, okay, so let's do a quick intro. Um, Evie, do you want to tell uh, our online audience who you are and what are you actually doing right now? <laughs> yeah, we are here in Brazil. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> we are here like a lot of people and uh, we just introduced ourselves. We have amazing people here today to talk uh, about all the questions that we put together and um, yeah, to, to, to get all uh, the information that uh, we need for this research. And um, yeah, it's just like amazing uh, to see all of these great people here. So Evie, I already gave a bit of an intro about the Institute and I also did a spoiler and I said that you are one of the alumni of the boot camps from last year, but maybe you wanna tell what is your background and what are you active with right now? outside lock, you know, besides when you are organizing last minute uh, nutrition research uh, dinners. <laughs> right. I am a biologist actually, and I'm also like a, a functional uh, nutrition um, chef. And uh, also like, I'm very interested in uh, the effect of the food inside our body, what, what it does functionally to, to us, to our health and our systems, and also what it does and the systems outside of our body, like in the earth systems, which I learned in the boot camps and it blew my mind. And it's just like to see this connection. And uh, I was always uh, very happy to see how it uh, affects us and our metabolism and our health, but like to see all the other ways and make these connections and see how food is, um, it's such a, a common ground for everything and how we can uh, ameliorate uh, things in the food system and then get a chain reaction that is uh, very powerful. Super. Would you mind telling us very shortly, quietly, so that the others don't hear it? I don't want to spoil the surprise, but can you tell us what is the menu tonight over there? Menu. <laughs> So this is the chef, Hi. Luciani, the meals for today. Oh, and uh, we have, yeah, it's all about functional nutrition functional and organic nutrition. food and uh, all, um, all uh, very rich in nutrition and uh, ingredients put together in order to uh, potentially uh, potentialize each other and, uh, and be better absorbed and all of that. Yeah, we have a great dinner going on here today. Oh my God, I'm very jealous. Um, so I would say, because we are kind of behind our schedule, we disconnect from each other for a moment or like, let's say for half an hour and you can okay. start with the dinner, start talking about the first four questions and we reunite okay. uh, quarter past. Would that work? Okay. Yes, definitely. Okay. Good. All see right. Then. Then see you in a bit. Bye. All right, so we are back to our question. Oh, Evie. <laughs> Sorry, let me just mute her quickly. I have this power, I hope. Uh, yeah, I'm yes. muted. Okay, cool, thank you. And there we go. Sure. Oh, why is it not popping up? Hmm. Just one sec. 
second. Uh, Zoom doesn't want to contribute and share the screen. I want it to share. Um, one second. But the question is still the same. How, what was the diet of your grandmother and how are you eating differently today? So who was about to start talking about it? Gabriela, maybe? No, why? You don't know how your grandmother was eating? My English language is not so uh, good, then I, I would like to reserve it for um, uh, uh, my presentation or relation that we can do, but not to, to try to talk about the, the food for my grandmother, sorry. <laughs> all right, okay, all right. I will definitely, okay. Yeah. So if you have any... If it's possible, I can talk in Spanish. For me, it's easy, but uh, I would like to to concentrate my energy to talk in English in in the uh, uh, and other subjects. Okay, okay, I completely understand. If you maybe have still a thought, just type it in the um, the chat, even if it's in Spanish. You can, because that we can maybe translate later. Unfortunately, I speak Hungarian, English and German, but no Spanish. So sorry about that. Uh, but please don't uh, feel limited. So if you have something to add, write it in the chat so we can translate it later so we don't lose your insights, okay? Thank you. All right. So let's get back to our question. So you know what, I will do the following. We have four questions to focus on in this uh, 20 minutes before we reconnect with the room. And the first one is what uh, we saw that's related to food traditions and how that changed and how do you see that already changing for yourself? Then what are the most common non-Brazilian foods you see around you and how do they affect uh, have an influence on your health. Then, uh, and that kind of relates to also the conversation or the topic what, uh, what we just had um, for Guatemala. Then we will have a talk about what is healthy eating at all? How would you define something being healthy? And do you consider that or why is it difficult to, to eat healthily? And uh, last one for these 20 minutes would be where did you learn about what you know? Like, where did you know what, oh, where did you learn what you know about food? I should just learn how to, how to read. Um, so yeah, that would be um, the first few questions. So who would like to maybe jump in? Uh, Maria, are you still in a class? I saw you waving, but uh, I was not sure if you actually can still maybe talk to us. Or Marina and Carmen, please feel free to, to share your thoughts. Can you hear me by any chance? Okay, so well, maybe we can start uh, with one uh, with a few points. Obviously, I do not have an understanding about the Brazilian consumption patterns because I, I cannot see them from here. Uh, but what we um, identified during our research um, that the Western um, diet or um, nutrition transition towards um, uh, Western diets has an influence on the consumption. And um, I was really curious about hearing some traditional um, uh, food, um, food stories from uh, the grandmother's table to see how we could compare these two to each other. So if you would have, and please, uh, Carmen, I know that you are not from Brazil. Please don't feel limited. We are very happy to also hear about traditions in Mexico. Okay. Look, I will try on multiple ways to get someone <laughs> talking to me. Um, uh, Julia, I can I can talk about uh, a little in Spanish about the traditional okay. food in Brazil. Um, 
then I would like to present myself. I will start in English. If I need, I, I change to Spanish, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I am a, a research and professor in the university and Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul and South Brazil. Uh, and uh, I, I work at the uh, reference center of uh, nutritional and food security. Uh, and it's connected to the Ministry of uh, uh, Science and Technology Ministry. We have a network uh, in the in uh, in the universities, and we are connected also with uh, universities from Amer Latin America, uh, because um, in the our last uh, policies uh, we have some some. Uh, Enforced from the ministry for the connections. Now we have these connections about the universities, uh, and I can uh, uh, and my work uh, group. We we work uh, we we work with fishermen, with uh, farmers, indigenous people, and environment policies. And in Brazil, is very. Um, uh, we, we are working very hardly in the social biodiversity because we we think that social biodiversity can connect the nutritional the uh, 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 the diversity of the food and also the environment question and we are working to try to to put uh, in the center of the development uh, policies the social biodiversity, and this is 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 very hard uh, work. And I I don't know if it's connected with dinner, but also yes. but in Brazil we are uh, uh, we are working uh, um, uh, we are nosotros estamos trabajando a partir de un gran proyecto que es uh, de uh, la val valorización uh, de la socio biodiversity por uh, di uh, diferentes re regiones. Entonces, yo soy del sur de Brasil. Nosotros tenemos muchas, uh, tenemos 16 plantas que fueron trabajadas por el Ministerio de, de, el, de Medio Ambiente y también de, uh, de uh, Desarrollo uh, Social para transformar en recetas y dietas que sean uh, uh, adquiridas por las uh, uh, y, y consumidas por las poblaciones. Tenemos este proyecto para las cinco regiones de Brasil. Entonces, ahí uh, hay lo, lo más tradicional de la alimentación y lo más uh, rico en la biodiversidad. Entonces, es uh, algo que estamos trabajando porque si sí, Brasil está pasando por una transición en, la, en el consumo, se están perdiendo las recetas, perdiendo todo la, eh, lo saber hacer de las madres y las de la, eh, gran madres también. Entonces, eh, es una forma de las universidades estaban trabajando con esta temática. Entonces, eh, y, y este centro que yo, nosotros eh, trabajamos, yo fui invitada por Jennifer, que está en el, en el eh, eh, Jantar. No. Eh, nosotros trabajamos con sociobiodiversidad, agroecología, soberanía y seguridad alimentaria y nutricional. Ten, tenemos esta, <ríe> esta pretensión. Entonces, quería dejar mi... Um, y esto, dejar mi... Ah, y, y tal vez lo importante también sea que tal vez pueda, pueda haber algún tipo de conexión que estamos intentando desarrollar con el ministerio una plataforma de gestión del conocimiento en soberanía y seguridad alimentaria y nutricional. Eh, y será entonces una plataforma en la web donde se tengan los datos, los datos de Brasil, uh, de bases uh, sec uh, secundarias, porque el gobierno está retirando las datos públicas para hacer las, las, las pesquisas. Uh, entonces será una, una, una plataforma que te, tendrá estos datos, pero también entradas de experiencias distintas, de uh, experiencias de pesquisas académicas y algunos ambientes de colaboración para desarrollar trabajos conjuntos. Es algo que estamos trabajando en este momento e intentando poner uh, esta dimensión de la sociobiodiversidad, que es muy cara 
para todas las temáticas. Gabriela, it's surprising how much I actually understood despite the fact that I don't speak Spanish. And I have one very, one very important question to ask. Um, social biodiversity, this, so we, we did talk a lot in our research, we found a lot about social nutrition and we talk about biodiversity, but I would like to understand your findings through your work how do you define social biodiversity? Yeah, if um, I might add, I can understand you quite uh, well, Gabriela, if you speak okay. slowly, because okay. my, I, yeah, un poco. Uh, but maybe I, I'm actually here to take notes. So maybe if I might ask you after the session, some yeah. of these concepts, if you could email them. Okay because it's, it's working in this way. If you try a little okay. English and, and Spanish, we can understand you. So it works, okay. uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Gabriela, I, I can also help translating if you want. Uh, okay, uh, sí, sí, porque hablas español, es de México, no? If you prefer. Sí, entonces podemos hacer una charla así. Uh, para mí será más fácil porque son uh, conceptos y, y muy abstractos para hablar en, en inglés de, de un rato para otro. Estoy muy ubicada en, en, la, en América Latina. Bueno, uh, mira, socio, socio biodiversidad está siendo construida en Brasil. No es adoptada hasta ahora por, por lo, uh, lat América Latina. Ellos trabajan con otro concepto como de patrimonio biocultural. ¿tá? Nosotros, eh, nosotros eh, en Brasil desarrollamos y están en las políticas públicas. ¿Por qué? Porque uh, la biodiversidad sí es, eh, es de los ecosistemas nativos y tienen su evolución a, a lo largo del tiempo. Pero uh, quien los maneja tradicionalmente son los pueblos tradicionales, los indígenas. Entonces es la diversidad social de Brasil y la diversidad biológica. Y hay toda esta contradicción de cómo se hace la conservación en Brasil. Y nosotros desarrollamos mucho con la lucha de Chico Mendes, con la lucha de los seringueros, de cómo se conserva la floresta haciendo su manejo y su uso. Entonces la sociobiodiversidad tiene esta, uh, esto, este arreglo de los, las personas y los pueblos que necesitan uh, la valorización de su modo de vida y las, la cuestión entonces la conservación de los ecosistemas. Entonces tenemos en las políticas una de, definición como los productos de la sociobiodiversidad. Entonces son productos que tienen un uso a lo largo del tiempo pero la lucha es no, no desvincular al pueblo. El pueblo necesita mantenerse, necesita su, su, sus tierras, su, sus recursos naturales, porque estamos pasando lo mismo que toda América Latina, ¿no? la, la destrucción de eso, de los modos de vida. Entonces, socio biodiversidad tiene ma mayor potencia por eso, porque carrega la necesidad de la conservación, valorización de los modos de vida de las, las poblaciones. It's super interesting. Thank you, uh, Gabriela. I only have one. What's the Pueblo? What's the, what's the translation? Uh, Do you know, Maria? Pueblos tradicionales. Los... It's villages and uh, tribes. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So actually, we have a very interesting question about that later on also. Okay. Is this... <laughs> Does somebody else want to share anything about uh, their grandmas or how actually the youth now is eating differently than, than uh, their, their, the older generations in Brazil? Or Mexico and Guatemala. Well, Mexico yeah. and Guatemala, <laughs> yeah, in Latin America. Okay. To be honest, I, I, I don't know how much, like, how these food traditions has changed over time, uh, especially about my grandma, to be honest. Uh, but we inherited uh, a lot of traditions from our roots. We have Japanese roots, um, third generation of Brazilian, um, Japanese Brazilian. 
So we stew it kind of Japanese rice in every meal, but we also like uh, like we we do have like Brazilian dishes as well that we eat every day. So so it's kind of like a blend of these traditions combined. It I would say in terms of our diet. <laughs> And if you compare how you were eating when you were still living with your family, and now that you are, you grew up, you work, you have completely different influences, social influence also, how do you see your, your own consumption? How do you make your food choices? Okay. So like, actually, um, I came back, like since we are in the middle of, of a pandemic <laughs> like I came back to stay with my family for a while mm -hmm. and and when I was living like now that I'm living with them we do have a lot of vegetables fruits every day um uh, like our meals usually are pretty colorful I'd say like rice beans is the sample and plus vegetables uh, a meat so um, we usually eat a lot of meat in Brazil, but my sister just transitioned. She is now into a pescatarian um, like kind of diet. So we have been eating uh, a lot of fish and, and seafood in general. And we are also like, I, I, as I mentioned, we are in a coastal city. So we have a lot of like fr uh, fresh seafood in our disposal. So it's, it's quite easy to find. Uh, but I would say in, uh, in Brazil in general, um, meat and poultry, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's common and it's what people eat every day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and before you went back to live with your family, how was, how, how did, how was your daily diet? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I forgot to answer. So uh, I was traveling a lot. So I, I didn't have time to cook my own meals most of the time. So I was eating in the in restaurants. Um, but but I, like, uh, I would say I was trying to eat healthy and looking for like kind of balanced meals. So with veggies and like, um, I don't know, but kind of like a balanced diet. Like, uh, mm -hmm. No. So how would you? <laughs> I don't know if it's clear or not. Yeah. No, no, it is clear. But I would like to ask, how do you how do you define balanced? Like, what is a balanced meal for you? Okay, so kind of like have a grain or like either noodles or rice plus uh, vegetables, fruits, and, and also a meat. So it can be like like uh, beef or chicken or fish or like kind of this this is my concept of balanced diet not necessarily if it's the right one but yeah no no it's all good all good <laughs> and um you only mentioned once fruits while you were talking about what you eat at home now with your family or what you look for when you are um, traveling um, yet in Brazil there are so many different types of fruits and I just want to um, like see when exactly do you consume fruit How, do you consider that as like a major part of your diet or what is your relation to it Okay, I, I don't know if uh, like it's just my behavior, my con consume behavior. Uh, I, I cannot speak to you about others, but I do eat a lot of fruits actually. Like in br for breakfast, I usually have like a bowl of fruits with yogurt and granola, and then after having lunch or dinner and, and dinner, I usually have fruits as well. So so it's kind of okay. Like so you actually meal. consume fruits three times a day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, Yankees, you are muted. Do you consider fruits as being healthy? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. And um, could you maybe, and that's again a question to everyone, where did you learn what you know about food? Okay, if nobody will answer, I'll just answer for you, okay? <laughs> uh, like at home, basically, like uh, with my family, family background, it's a, like, well, yeah, basically. Yeah. And 
Um, I'm just checking the names on um, on my list because I don't see all of you. Uh, oh, and we actually have someone in the waiting room. Sorry, I didn't see that because I'm sharing my screen. Um, oh, it just happened. No, no, no. All good. All good. Um, can you still see the same screen I'm sharing? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, let me just get on the participants list. Okay, and we have Bruna here. Hi, Bruna. Can you hear us? Hi, uh, yes. Hi, Bruna. Hi. How Hi. are you? I'm fine. Thanks for joining. We are talking about, can you see my uh, screen right now? Yes. We are, we are talking about consumption behaviors and nutrition in general in Brazil. Where are you based? Luna? All right. Uh, in case you have some connectivity issues, you can also just type in the chat. I see already some very interesting English-Spanish conversation running there. Uh, so please feel free to drop your thoughts there. I also saw that Gabriela already wrote that actually her knowledge about food was influenced by her community and university and other um, social groups as well. Um, so Gabriela, um, would you uh, have any insights for us on school canteens, like cafeterias, where you as their students or the young generation can actually eat? How is, how is the, the nutrition and the availability of this kind of food in Brazil? I couldn't understand uh, one word, uh, Canadian. Cafeteria. Yes, uh, yes. So the, the canteen, you know, the, the uh, restaurant in the university? Ah, um, let me think. Um, I, I work uh, with a nutrition course. Then I am a biologist, but uh, I work with, with them. And um, in this moment, we are uh, making a work that uh, each uh, each each um, cada alumno fotografa su su plato de comida y y va, estamos uh, evaluando avaliando si ellos están uh, comiendo solamente las la, las comidas convencionales o se tienen o comidas más diversas uh, y acá en, en Puerto Alegre tenemos esta aproximación con las frutas nativas que serían de la sociobiodiversidad y, y, y hay una cadena, se llama, se llama cadena solidaria de las frutas nativas que tienen las, estas frutas en polpas que, son, que se ha, ha, hacen los, los jugos pero también las diferentes dietas y recetas y muchos de estos alumnos que son de la universidad de, uh, de, de Río Grande del Sur y trabaja con nutri estudia nutrición, están sí diversificando su dieta. Uh, este trabajo también estamos evaluando si, si ellos uh, adquieren sus, uh, sus alimentos, las familias, si adquieren los, las, las grandes redes de supermercados o se adquieren en los pequeños mercados, el mercado público, o ahora con la pandemia están todos organizan muchas organizaciones de los agricultores están entregando la, la comida en cestas en las casas entonces estamos evaluando esto en este momento cómo las familias están consiguiendo eh, organizarse uh, pero las cantinas yo no tengo mucho es, esta mirada para las cantinas uh, en este momento estamos trabajando con esto y tengo estas informaciones y, y me parece Uh, por la, el análisis y la discusión con ellos, que en la pandemia las personas están se alimentando mucho mejor de lo que si estuviesen en, los, en la vida cotidiana, porque tienen la posibilidad de, uh, de estar en casa y haciendo la comida, y, y, y ellos uh, hicieron fotos 
que parecían de, de libros, estaban maravillosos. Claro que no es siempre la comida, sí, pero, pero fue lo que apareció en este momento. So, I was hoping I can ask Bruna about um, the food traditions, but um, she already left. Uh, maybe she had some um, connectivity uh, things. In the meanwhile, I will um, connect with the other room, but uh, if you still have some thoughts about how, um, how healthy eating is considered and why is it, is it difficult to eat healthy in Brazil? Let's just think about this. Is it, yeah? Me gustaría hablar de, de una discusión que está muy caliente en Brasil ahora de, la, de los guías alimentarios, uh, que so, la, la Organización Mundial de la Salud uh, exige de los gobiernos que tengan directrices para, uh, para la alimentación saludable. Entonces, nuestro guía alimentar de 2014 tiene una clasificación que es los, los in natura o mínimamente procesados, los con poco procesamiento, hasta los ultra procesados. Y la guía dice que la alimentación saludable tiene que llegar próximo de los in natura o mínimamente procesados y si sí evitar los ultra procesados. Lo que está aconteciendo en Brasil ahora, eh, el Ministerio de la Agricultura está produciendo una nota técnica para el Ministerio de la Salud para que ha, haga una revisión de esta clasificación, porque no hay datos que indiquen que los ultraprocesados no hacen bien a la salud. Entonces, eh, es, una, uh, es una tentativa de la ciencia de los alimentos estar en, eh, eh, contribuyendo para lo que es Uh, uh, soberanía y seguridad alimentaria, ¿no? Están intentando un espacio para dejar que las industrias um, tengan más uh, injerencia en toda la alimentación brasileña. I have a question, Gabriela. So uh, I'm guessing you also know Professor Montero. Sí, él es el responsable por la guía. Sí. sí. Es de, no sé si es de São Paulo o Río de Janeiro, pero es, de, es el responsable. Sí. sí, entonces la pelea está, está grande. And do you think if, if people know more about food and about these ultra processed foods, do you think that they are consuming the unhealthy products less? Sí. Or is it still hard to... Uh, eat healthy, if, if you know, if you have a better knowledge about what's healthy and not. Um, entonces, en las ciudades, la, la alimentación está muy homogenizada y vamos a hablar de las clases que no tengan tanto poder adquisitivo para elegir lo que comen, ¿no? Entonces, para estas, uh, la, la, la comida de fast food, la comida de las galletas son muy, uh, muy fáciles. Pero esto también está ocurriendo en las comunidades rurales y esto es lo más difícil porque uh, en algunas regiones las personas plantan la soya o el fumo y con la, el, la plata van a, a comprar uh, comida en la ciudad y no producen más, dejan de producir su propio alimento. Entonces es muy, muy grave. Y también uh, hay algunos trabajos que en la propia Amazonía con, que tienen que cruzar por ríos, llegan las, las galletas, llega la Coca-Cola, llega todo. Entonces estamos sí entrando en un cuadro de mucha obesidad y un cuadro de desnutrición como en, en la mayor parte uh, sí, de, de América okay. Latina. Just to But, understand uh, correctly, uh, Marina, it's in I, the room. I don't think, yeah, I, I don't think it's hard to get um, like nutritious food. Uh, I don't know if you have in your research, you found that we have a lot of uh, street markets. Um, so it happens once a week in a part of the city and it goes uh, in every city almost in Brazil. And you can buy fru fruits and vegetables directly from the Um, producer, the, the agriculture farmer, and it's cheap. So you can get it anywhere in, in Brazil. So I, I would say it's accessible okay. to get um, 
like fruits and vegetables, basically, anywhere. I would have uh, one more question um, to um, all of you. Do you see, because now I see that uh, Gabriela is actually part of a lot of work, which is working towards um, um, these, um, these directions, how to, to educate and build systems which are helping um, healthy societies and nutrition and biodiversity. Do you know of any um, local, regional or for the whole uh, country, any initiatives who are trying to address the younger generation in terms of their um, diet? Is there a new trend what they, uh, what is more local and including um, uh, indigenous um, foods, um, what they can follow and it is picking up right now? Bueno, voy a en español ahora. Yo, yo... Tuve la gran oportunidad de trabajar en una, como universidad en una política que era la política de desarrollo territorial. Uh, y en Brasil me parece que tal vez 80% de su territorio tenía uh, esta posibilidad de esta política, que era uh, intentar um, uh, establecer un colegiado que hiciese un plan de futuro, un plan de desarrollo territorial y que movilizase la juventud, las mujeres, uh, la agroecología. Entonces uh, se trabajó y yo trabajé de 2015 a 2018, 19, uh, intentando, uh, uh, nosotros asesoramos el colegiado y, y hicimos conferencias de la juventud, que son conferencias nacionales, Entonces, hicimos a nivel uh, local, a nivel uh, regional, y había, sí, mucha, eh, eh, mucho interés, o, o estaba se despertando el interés de, de esta juventud, juventud rural y de ciudad, ciudad pequeñas, para que se involucrase en esos procesos. Pero todo eso ahora son ruinas de algo que no existe, no existe en cuanto a política pública, existe hoy en cuanto a redes las redes de agroecología, las redes de, de soberanía y seguridad alimentaria, las redes de nutrición. Entonces, hoy es la sociedad civil y la posibilidad de hacer las conexiones para, para afuera, porque de, del gobierno se está matando todo lo que uh, existió en Brasil hasta, <ríe> hasta pocos años atrás. Marina, could, did you come across any um, any initiative or new trend what would have an influence on your diet? Any industry, any like anything specific? You mean or? Yeah, yeah. So if uh, if you heard about any initiative addressing um, a diet and uh, nutrition and health and uh, anything, what you heard about and what is interesting for mainly your generation. Okay, I think um, there's a big movement now. Try like people are trying to eat more healthy, like conscious, uh, like change their diet. So I have a lot of friends that are actually turning to veganism or like, or just like not vegan or vegetarian, I would say. So even like my sister is trying like a pescatarian diet now. Yeah. And that's so, for health reasons or for environmental reasons? I would say both. Um, mm -hmm. So both. Um, and also there's a, move, a movement in the industry try, trying to change um, the, the, the product itself. So now in supermarkets, you can see the rise of plant-based food from uh, like milks made from um, nuts, basically, mm -hmm. from like um, a variety of meat that like every a big brand is trying to launch a plant-based beef now I would say so so it's kind of like a trend that it's it's already it has been already um, a, a big thing in Europe in US and now it's it's coming to Brazil so and also you can see this in beverages so people are not consuming sodas that much anymore um, so they are trying to create more 
uh, healthy, conscious like drinks. So. So, and how uh, yeah. is this movement related to uh, different uh, societal uh, classes or uh, econ economic groups? Uh, definitely, I would say. Uh, so it's more like towards middle class and upper class, I'd say. And, okay. and now, it, yeah, I think it's, it started you know, from this and all this conscious movement of no plastic, no environmental damage and like kind of climate change and everything. And, and yeah, it's starting more in the, the, the upper classes. Mm. And how do you see the divide between urban and rural environments? So in, in rural areas, would you also have access to all of these products, what you mentioned? Um, in, I would say in, in urban centers, of course, it's easier to get more quality products, but it is also more expensive to get in a in a chain of in a supermarket chain in a big capital, I'd say. But um, in the rural areas, I guess it's it more depends on uh, what it's being cultivated or in terms of agriculture in in, mm -hmm. in the zone. I don't know if uh, Gabriela has another point of view <laughs> and I told her that I could help uh, translating as well if she, if she needs <laughs> yeah, Gabriela mentioned something about the ultra processed food consumption in rural areas and in the in urban areas could you maybe repeat or translate just to be sure okay. I thought she said in urban areas that there are more uh, ultra processed foods available but I'm not totally sure so. <laughs> ok. Gabriela, uh, você quer falar em português e eu traduzo uh, sobre ultraprocessados? Daí você fala uma frase e eu traduzo rapidinho. Uh, não, eu posso continuar em espanhol. Né? Não sei se eles entendem mais ou menos, né? E tu me, me traduz em espanhol, se for o caso, pode ser? Tá bom. Uh, do you want me to translate to Spanish or you can understand everything? Uh... Yeah, she, yeah. She, she wants to continue in Spanish, but, uh, but I don't know if you need uh, help in translation or... It's yeah, yeah. There, there, she already mentioned, the, I think, the urban environment and the, the, the rural population related to ultra-processed foods consumption. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not really sure uh, <laughs> okay. at that point. Yeah. So just okay. if you could check if, uh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. I told you. I told you uh, exactly this. This. This point. Uh, I, I don't know the name, but there is a documentary that the uh, show the ships in the Amazon rivers. Uh, uh, levando, levando, levando os ultraprocessados, Marina. <laughs> uh, so there's like ships taking this ultra-processed food. Um, yeah. towards the river or something. I don't, I don't know where yeah. was it. But okay. she, she mentioned there is a documentary uh, talking about So it's this. spreading from the city to the, the rural environment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. If and you also... can remember the documentary, could you just um, write down the name for us? Yeah, I can. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I would have one more question related, uh, relating uh, back to the very first question um, with uh, the grandmother, because I'm still curious about, um, so I always bring up Italians and Indians, they have this very strong food identity and they are very proud of their traditions and they eat their food even when they are abroad. <laughs> Um, so I would like to understand, is there a pride in, uh, in Brazil about local food, about uh, traditions and how you cook and prepare and about what your environment is actually nurturing you with or is able to provide? Mm -hmm. Quer começar, Marina? You can speak and I'll just complete after. Okay. Uh, uh, the question uh, is uh, about the, 
uh, if, Brazilians, if okay. Brazilians are proud and um, very connected to their food traditions and all the diversity, what actually the land provides. Uh, e uh, os brasileiros estão conectados culturalmente com a comida, em termos de sim. tradições, por exemplo, quando eles vão viajar, se as pessoas, é, enfim, têm orgulho da, da comida brasileira. Ah, ok. I think yes, I think yes, because uh, when the, the Brazilian is outside, they uh, have the valor... Uh, eles valorizam mais, né? É, uh, uh, I think I, I am uh, I'm bringing the vision from the community, rural communities and also the um, uh, the students people. I, I don't know how is uh, the vision, the urban vision people. I think Marina can bring uh, better the, the, this question. But we we are uh, seeing that the traditional rural people is uh, losing their uh, their knowledge this is what are doing and uh, after and além disso além disso and besides this yes <laughs> and besides this um the young people from rural areas are going to the cities. The, the, there is the, so the empty of the rural areas. I think Europe already uh, live at this situation, but Brazil is now in this, in this process, transition process. Uh, more than 80% of our population is in the urban cities. Mm -hmm. Do you know, what is um, the gap? Why is the knowledge getting lost about traditions? So what, because I understand that younger people move to yeah. cities, but still they did grow up in maybe rural areas. Where is that divide? Where is that cut where those traditions are not nurtured further anymore? We we live at a hard process of um, hard process in the 70s, 60s, 80s, uh, that the rural communities are um, atrasado, are, are later, are uh, Marina me ajuda. As pessoas do rural são atrasadas, consideradas atrasadas. So she's saying that um, people in rural areas are, are kind of um, left behind. Left behind, but I, I don't know what the she means with uh, o, o que atrasado em que sentido? <laughs> é, primitivas, the, con, uh, the concept of yeah. uh, late, yeah, atrasado, later, mm -hmm. and, and it was very, very hard uh, situation in the 70s. And when the environment uh, systems uh, start to uh, to uh, relevance in Brazil uh, and the, the fight of uh, traditional people, Indian people, uh, after this, uh, it started to revalorizar, evaluate the rural traditional knowledge. But the, the young people start with this mark and then the agroecology is this process, and uh, agroecology, the um, uh, the traditional uh, food, are are kind are kind of process of this revalorization. But uh, but the, the process it was really really hard. The green revolution is really really hard. This uh, this government is. Um, uh, putting a lot of money in the uh, uh, in the agro agro business, agro business, and uh, only uh, produce commodities for the mm -hmm. uh, no uh, for the no no uh, crescimento da economia, economy grow. Yeah. The, this is the the mentality now, 
and, 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 entonces, por, por esta razón es muy importante que las personas revaloricen ¿no? la, la, la alimentación, la, 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 la alimentación tradicional, los alimentos de la sociobiodiversidad. Y es sí el movimiento de la gastronomía la, la gran fuerza de Brasil hoy, la, la gastronomía, la gastronomía regional, la gastronomía cultural, la gastronomía porque como la mayor parte de las personas están en la ciudad, no saben lo que se pasa en, los, en, en el rural. Entonces, una de las únicas conexiones es con la naturaleza, hasta se puede pensar así, es la, la, la comida. Entonces, es, es, es muy importante lo que uh, el instituto de ustedes está haciendo y haciendo. Es, este es un punto importantísimo. <laughs> this is very uh, thank you, Gabriela. I, I was wondering we in in the beginning we also talked with uh, I think what was her name, but the the, the girl from Carmen Guatemala, and Carmen. she was talking about the 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 Western foods and the ultra processed foods and the 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 Pepsi. It's actually a people gain social status. So they want to be seen with these um, American foods because it gives them uh, a status. So is that something that's in Brazil also? Yeah, yeah, really yeah. yes. Yeah, a and um, our, uh, our cities are very disequal. We, we have the peripherias, uh, the local who the poor people live, that they don't have access to a healthy food. And it's very, it's more expensive in this place. Um, uh, we, uh, I was talking about uh, a student from URGS that lives, it's a, a woman, Woman, it's a mother and live in the periphery and is uh, thinking how can uh, uh, take uh, healthy food for this this space and uh, this is a a, a, a very uh, challenge for for Brazil and, and for but there cool. there is some 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 possibilities yeah so I have a question. Um... So you have, because you mentioned that uh, all over Brazil, it is very common to have uh, these markets where you can buy directly from producers. Now, still, there are the, the agglomerating uh, areas around bigger urban, like bigger cities, where you don't have that, if I, if I understand this correctly. So you have urban areas with access to, um, to farm produce, then you have urban cities where you might have farmers coming to sell their produce, but there is an in-between area where there is no access to uh, healthy food and it's even more expensive than if, if you buy... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Are we talking about the favelas? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. We are talking the medio and high society and the rest of Brazil. And the rest of Brazil is suffering a lot. Even mm -hmm. in the cities, yeah. So is healthy food then uh, more expensive than the unhealthy ultra-processed food? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Because in Guatemala, it was the other way around. So the, the, the healthy food is really cheap. So people are showing off by buying uh, the Western food. So it's very interesting. Thank you. And um, I would have one more question. Oh, what I just had it in my mind. Oh my God, ultra processed, more ex more expensive. Yes. So Gabriela, do you know about any uh, any institutes or association or uh, programs who are trying to create? Um, so show people that from little money, you can also create a diverse meal with having all the necessary nutrition. Is there any program who is trying to uh, do this education? 
Could you repeat the, the last part of the question, please? So if there is any program in Brazil focusing on this um, low, lower, like this, um, the lower level of society who wouldn't afford to buy healthy food, to help them identify what are the ways to still have a diverse meal from very, um, with very low um, resources. If you have any examples, maybe. Um, okay, let me let me uh, share my comprehension of, of the the question. Um, if I, I know some uh, some initiative, some uh, ex experience that uh, that uh, uh, leave uh, healthy food for the favelas or peripherias, or yes, this my, more or less this this question. Uh, I, I work with uh, universities and more public uh, institutions, and uh, I, I know the high uh, networks of uh, nutrition and food uh, security. And these high uh, networks work with, uh, for example, um, put some money in uh, ultra processed uh, food uh, is trying to, to put to, to, to work in the uh, um, in the uh, elas uh, eh, 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 las políticas y no y no yo no tengo el conocimiento tanto de los trabajos con las eh, con las poblaciones pero en florianópolis there is, uh, tiene una iniciativa de hacer las hortas comunitarias con la basura, con la basura de, lo, de la alimentación. Y es un proyecto que está muy, muy lindo, se llama Los Baudinos, que son la forma de, de la organización. Entonces, Florianópolis se puede hablar en esto. Uh, Hay, hay algunas, algunos trabajos de uh, individuales o de profesoras que llevan las, las comidas a, los, uh, a las periferias y hacen gran cocinas comunitarias. Nosotros teníamos en, en la Política Nacional de Seguridad Alimentaria y Nutricional los equipamientos como las cocinas y restaurantes populares y comunitarios. Y estos hoy no tienen plata prácticamente para, para eso. Uh, y, pero hay una otra, otra sugestión, otros, ah sí, yo tengo conocimiento por los indígenas, los guaraní, uh, ellos hoy tienen acceso a, a algunas políticas, sí, de repase de, los, de las cestas básicas, eh, pero eh, lo que estás intentando es um, conseguir la máxima de sanidad de los alimentos y de las, uh, y de las do donaciones para que lleguen a las aldeas. Uh, con, uh, con calidad, ¿no? Entonces, uh, y, y lo que los le preocupa hoy es lo después, la post pandemia, cuando no hay más la plata para estas iniciativas. Entonces, ellos están intentando organizarse. Los pueblos negros también, los quilombolas, que son los negros del rural, que, uh, que te, asumen esta identidad, también están bastante organizados. Entonces, me parece que la organización social hoy es lo más importante para, para, estas, uh, para estos grupos, para estos pueblos. Y lo MST, que es el, el, el movimiento de los 100 Terra, que están uh, trabajando con muchos asentamientos, que son tierras que fueran donadas para estos grupos y que hoy intentan producir, por ejemplo, acerca de Porto Alegre, uh, lo arroz orgánico. Estos grupos tuvieron mucho, muchas políticas, pero ahora también están cortadas. Entonces no se sabe cómo estos asentamientos van o no conseguir a trabajar. Acá en Brasil tuvimos una, una política que es de seguridad alimentaria, que es las compras institucionales. Entonces uh, uh, la, las, uh, las asociaciones, los sindicatos, los grupos, uh, los movimientos se organizaban para... Uh, vender para la alimentación escolar, vender para los programas de donaciones de alimentos. Entonces, los mercados del gobierno eran muy importantes para la manutención de la agricultura familiar y de estos grupos y que se 
uh, y que están lo, los recursos escaseando muchísimo, pero tenemos en ley que 30% de los alimentos de las escuelas uh, municipales y eh, 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 estaduales tienen que venir de la agricultura familiar. Entonces, lo que Brasil está intentando hacer es mantener lo mínimo que ha conseguido construir para traer ma mayor equidad para, uh, para su contexto. Could you please repeat, like 30% of the meals for the, the public meals in schools are with traditional uh, far agriculture far, uh, familiar agri farmers familiar farmers okay uh, so they are close close to the consumer yes yes okay. also yes okay so that was actually my question in the schools Are a lot of children uh, fed? Yeah, do they get food from the schools or how? Uh, yes, we, we have a lot of fat people in, in, in all society, but we have this. Um, I, I was talking about uh, uh, alimentar guía, los guías alimentares. Son las políticas de alimentación direccionadas al SUS, por ejemplo, que es el sistema único de salud, que los sistemas públicos, los sistemas de alimentación uh, del gobierno, de las escuelas del gobierno, tienen que uh, respetar estas directrices. Por eso es tan importante también mantener las directrices de que se, uh, se evite lo, el consumo de los ultraprocesados. Es una realidad. Son las conquistas de Brasil que están se manteniendo. Ok. Thank you. All right. Um, I kind of lost um, my connection with the other room in terms of uh, chatting with each other. So I will now go on with the next questions and we will see when we connect with them, we do the, the common questions. Um, so the next questions actually. And now it should go, wait a second. I stop sharing for a moment, one second. Um, so the next set of questions uh, will be around indigenous fruits and um, these um, sh sh added sugar beverages and um, fruit loss and fruit waste. And that's actually very good what, um, Um, Marina just texted about uh, in the in the chat that there is this ugly uh, fruit uh, project. So let me just open the right questions for you. So here, this one. So the next questions are about if you know indigenous fruits, uh, do you know of um, like how do you eat them? Um, And why is it not going further? Oh, no. Sorry, I am having some technical issues here. Exactly. And there are so many amazing fruits. I actually prepared some uh, crash, uh, pictures for you uh, for, from the fruits that are incorporated in the dinner um, um, in, the, in the restaurant in Polo, uh, Porto Alegre. And, um, and that we identified that there is a huge uh, fruit loss Um, in the fields, and um, what do you think is the, uh, the reason behind that? And also, why is so much fruit wasted in different stages of the supply chain? So what are the, those problems? What are uh, making us losing out of, uh, like from that biodiversity and uh, nutritious fruits, what you actually have in Brazil? So that would be the next um, topic um, what we would like to discuss. Marina, do you maybe have some uh, input because you just posted about this project as well. Do you actually, um, do you actually buy uh, produce from them? Actually, I never bought it, but I, but I know this project, <laughs> um, but Uh, to be honest, uh, regarding your question, I don't know much about, I, I, I suppose that there are a lot of 
uh, fruits and vegetables that doesn't meet the standards of the industry about shape, size, size, and, and this kind of things. And they ended up like being wasted. Um, and this is only one project that I know uh, that have been trying to reduce this waste by commercializing these products, basically. Okay. But I don't have a lot of inputs in this, in, in this case. No, no, don't worry. It's okay. I have one question for you, though. Uh, so you know about this project. Um, tell me why, why haven't you bought anything? And this is not a, please don't take this question as like, why are you not buying mm -hmm. from them? Uh, it is more a question to figure out, um, is it too expensive? Is it uh, inconvenient because they only deliver once a week? Or um, what is the reason why it may or may not be uh, attractive for consumers? Okay, I mm, let's say that I never bought it because I never had the need. I have like a, a farmer's market right at my door every Friday that I can buy fresh products like every Friday, basically morning, the, farm, the, the farmer's market is there. So I don't need actually. But if I would leave far away from one of these markets or far away from a supermarket, I'll definitely try to find uh, solutions like these. Um, I don't know about the price or, but I don't think it's quite, a, I don't think it's expensive at all. Mm. And then at the end of the Friday and the market, mm -hmm. do they have to throw a lot away? Is there like uh, overproduction or too, uh, I, too in much terms offering? Of the waste, uh, they have yeah. these markets going on uh, every day in a, each part of the city. I'm talk, talking more about Sao Paulo, the, the capital of the state. So they have these markets running like from Monday to the next, to, from Monday to Sunday and mm -hmm. in different neighborhoods. So basically they, they have a, time, a timetable and they go every morning to, to a different neighborhood basically. I was trying to find more articles about it. That's why I was, <laughs> I'm trying to search for you here to get Thank some you. materials for you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> In English, <laughs> okay. Thank you. No, you can go with any language now. I just, uh, I decided to <laughs> figure out how to translate. That's it. <laughs> That's our a new challenge. Um, I actually, I kept thinking, um, we have a food alchemist team in Bologna and they are all Spanish. So they will have some uh, plans uh, for the weekend because I will send them the recording and ask them to, okay, can you please make notes for me? <laughs> so we will figure this out. Um, okay. And um, just one more question. So I understand that basically for you, the reason not purchasing mainly from this initiative because you already have your, your source, what you are used to and what you are also satisfied with. Um, my, so here in, in Berlin, there is this um, very weird um, situation that unfortunately we don't have markets which are open from Monday to Sunday. You do have markets twice a week at certain locations, always in the worst times, to be completely honest with you, because they are open during office hours. So you are working and by the time you would arrive, they are not there anymore. Now your only chance is maybe Saturday to go somewhere and then you have this perception that you go to a market, but you actually don't know if the person who is selling there is a, actually the producer or is just the person who went to the main wholesale market and brought the, uh, bought the produce there. So it is very difficult to differentiate between the stands and have this uh, transparency and knowledge about the origin of your food. So I wanted to see how is that in Brazil, because in, with a lot of countries, we see this um, um, uh, situation that economy has to grow. So they focus on uh, commodity food production for export. And then they actually import produce for cheaper, what they would have in their countries. So how do you see that um, are you always like, do you, are you hundred percent sure that the market where you buy, you actually buy from a farmer? So this is something what everyone knows and this is clear. Um, and so how, how do people inform themselves about the, the origin of their food? 
okay, you can talk with the farmers <laughs> first. <laughs> they, okay, they, yeah, so they can say, oh, uh, these, uh, so usually they say uh, their source, <laughs> they, they tell about their source. Uh, if they are buying from someone or if they are bringing their own products. Um, actually, I have a pretty um, co interesting comment. Um, I'm in the countryside in a coastal city, as I mentioned. And here we also have this farmer's market running in different neighborhoods. That's why I don't know if it's common in other parts of Brazil because Brazil is just so big. But the products that gets here uh, are not as fresh and as uh, good looking as the ones in the, in the capital. Okay. So, so I would say, yeah, <laughs> it's not the same quality, I would say. Okay, and what is your perception about that? Do you, are you feeling, so that's the, the, if I understand, this is the physical appearance of the product, what you are talking about, yeah, right? And also like how, about variety. Like variety, uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that because in your region, a limited amount of uh, foods are grown? Or is that because there is no demand for more? Or what do you think is the reason? Um, to be honest, I don't know the reason why this, this is actually happening. Because the guy who, who is the selling on the market, he, he, he's not the, the farmer itself. He buys from a distribution center in, in another area. So that's why probably it's not the same quality. Uh, yeah. And there's not much stands as well. There's not much uh, people doing this. So Interesting. So. And may, may I ask how, um, what is the size, so where you are based now at the coast? Is that, uh, is that a village? Is that a town? Is that still a city with a lot of people? So what shall I imagine in terms of... Uh... Okay, it's a, it's a city around 150,000 people in the mm -hmm. coast. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. considered um, like a... It's not a medium. Uh, it's a small, a small city. It's a touristic city, actually. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Because that's that's another um, interesting thing. What I saw well, again, not in Brazil, in in Hungary, that you would assume that when someone um, lives um, on the countryside, they have a shorter distance to farmers, and they should have access to fresh produce in a very, mm -hmm. short, with very short food miles or low food miles. Now, my hometown is a very small town. It's only 20,000 uh, people living there, and but it's highly industrialized. So the only access to food is in th supermarkets. Okay. So I cannot even, like, I don't know what platform to look at or go to. There is no weekly market there. This is like something what you would, I, I assume, oh, it's everywhere. At least once a week, there is a market where you can go to. But no, it's only discounters. So how, um, how are we expecting people to make better food choices if there is no access to it, right? Mm -hmm. So now relating, uh, Gabriela, do you have anything to add about food loss and food waste maybe in the value chain? Just to make a small comment. <laughs> just, just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. Go, go, go. Very quick. Uh, I actually have the contact of farmers living nearby, and I can buy directly from them, which I do every week as well. So before they, they send it to these big centers, I uh -huh. buy it from them, directly from the farmer. And, it's and how do you them. have their contact? How did that happen? So like, it's just people that I, that I get to know, <laughs> like my, my family gets to know and mm -hmm. it's easy to reach out. So you can buy directly from I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> no, come on, you, you have really good food in, in the Netherlands as well. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it's not really possible to buy like really nice uh, variety or organic produced foods. It's really difficult and it's really expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. Right? In, yeah. in terms of like, we also have a fish market in every city, in every coastal city. So it's easy for you to find fresh fish um, and seafood. Nice. So, oh, that, so that I am also, that I am jealous about more than 
the the veggies and fruits but um also i have so that means that you know these farmers different farmers and you order from them before they even you know like bigger volume hand over to distribution centers does that mean that you go to each of them individually to pick up the produce or how do you how do you source yes yeah, so basically i go to the farm and get get it from straight from them basically so and do you go to multiple places no, it's just one place wow. that, that, yeah. And we also have small stalls for fruits and vegetables, uh, like oh, like small stores specifically for fruits and vegetables that you can buy these fruits. Okay, okay, okay. But, but this, <laughs> basically, you can go on with Gabriel. No, no, Fine. no, all good. You know, these are very <laughs> valuable information. Thank you. No, but it's only my perception. So, and, and Brazil is such a continent country so probably if you speak from someone from a different location different city they will have a different insights so, so yes it's good. that mm -hmm. is true but you are someone who is representing a certain diet and your consumption behaviors are also interesting for us Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Look at us. At the beginning, you were like, "Oh no, I mean, I, I, but nothing special." And then you brought us the project with the the ugly fruits and veggies. Now you tell me you buy directly from a farmer. So slowly but surely, we actually discover that you have pretty interesting consumption um, patterns. Yes, yes. So please. I was wondering one more thing, uh, Marina. So you buy directly from the farmer, yet you don't have a lot of knowledge about indigenous fruit. So are, what are the farmers growing? Are they also like cultivating rare uh, uh, varietals or is it like- I a would very... say these fruits are more in a different part of Brazil. So if you go to the Amazon, yeah. probably you will have different like exotic fruits, but mm -hmm. it's not uh, what people usually grow. <laughs> Yeah. But would you say that the, the, the farmers that you go to are like growing the, the conventional crops that you also see in the, in the supermarket? Yes. Or do they sometimes yes, surprise exactly. you with like purple corn or how should no. we? Okay. <laughs> no, in, I, I haven't seen purple corn in Brazil, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was just, it was just an example. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I just put up a um, um, picture or like five pictures actually of different fruits. Um, these fruits are incorporated in the dinner in uh, Porto Alegre. And um, I wanted to ask you, first of all, if you know all of them and uh, how do you eat them if you do? Is that something what is easy to, to uh, procure or like, what is your relation to these fruits on the picture? Could you actually name all of them? Yes, I'm just not sure about this one in the left. It's a lime or it's a on different the top, type of lime? Yeah, top, on the top, left. Um, I have <laughs> to cheat. A bitter gourd? No, 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 no. it's not. No, no, no. no. It is called, let me just cheat, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's called bergamota bergamota and it's a substitute of tangerine okay <laughs> okay so this is um uh, something what um they they have in the in the dinner and and the other fruits they you know all of them yes okay so I heard from um I heard from Evie that the banana is actually the fruit which is the most consumed. Yes, we lost Julia. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the notes. Oh, she's back. Oh, yes. I okay, yeah, you're back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how, the, how long did you hear me? Not, I think. You didn't hear me at all, but can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, wait. So ah, you, okay. you said the bananas? Yeah. Are, are the... 
Yeah, the bananas are consumed uh, a lot. Oh, she, we lost her. So actually we didn't hear from Gabriela. How many indigenous fruits do you know that are from Brazil? I am so sorry. I have some um, Wi-Fi issues, but I am with you in a moment. I just connected to my um, data. Um, I assume you didn't hear me. So what I just said that I heard bananas are the most consumed uh, fruits in, um, or is the most consumed fruit in Brazil. Now, my only question is, are all the varieties of banana consumed? Or is that something what went into a direction of high scale production and it's just widely available and that's why people eat that? What do you know about this? Gabriela, do you wanna join us? Marina, me repete ali a parte final da pergunta que eu não peguei. Uh, se tem uma grande variedade de bananas que é consumida ou se é só um tipo? Eles falaram que banana é a fruta mais consumida. <risos> não sei se é esse o seu ponto de vista também. No sul do Brasil é. Não sei se para ti também. Ok. Let's, let's talk in English. Uh, uh, in the south of Brazil, I think we have more or less four or five kinds of banana, not, not more than, than this. But we uh, in the north Brazil, yes, I think there is another kind of banana. So do you think that the, the, the farmers that are actually selling their products on the farmer's market or just directly to the consumer and so not in the supermarket, but do you think they use the same seeds as the, like the big agriculture uh, producers that are selling to the supermarket? Uh, the same seeds for uh, what kind of, uh, of product? So do you think also like small farmers are using these very efficient GMO uh, seeds for the production or is it very organic? Oh, um, this is the, the challenge of the agroecology where, uh, uh, where where uh, come where come where they come the, the seeds and uh, 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 the uh, voy a hablar en español La, las semillas criollas que algunos agricultores manejan estas sí son son muy bien uh, guardadas por las comunidades pero también estos guardianes van a, a perdiendo sus um, sus semillas y porque también tenemos una, una legislación en Brasil uh, que exige una uh, estándar uh, una una homogeneización de esta de esta producción cuál es para la, la venta entonces cada vez más los pequeños agricultores los agricultores familiares van a perdiendo su autonomía So the knowledge is disappearing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So maybe it's actually for the next round, but uh, we're, we're doing things differently anyway. Uh, we, we, you could say that the indigenous communities are the guardians of the rainforest. Mm -hmm. So they really protect the biodiversity, but also the forest on itself in uh, cleaning it and preventing, for example, forest fires. Um, so what what role, maybe I think you, you touched on some points uh, earlier, but what role do you think these indigenous communities could play in the food system? And how can we empower them oh, yeah. to, uh, yeah. 
Okay, uh, we have uh, two uh, distinct uh, situations in Brazil. The Amazon indigenous people that they have a lot of lands and the south of Brazil, uh, they have uh, a little, uh, little lands. And uh, uh, para estos de Amazonia, Amazonia, la gran dificultad son ahorita uh, la, eh, las fronteras de las, de las tierras, lo desmatamiento, las muertes de las lideranzas, la mineración en las tierras indígenas. Está, uh, lo que es, estamos oyendo es que está terrible y también la, lo desmatamiento de Amazonía en general, ¿no? la, la, uh, la quema de la... Uh, entonces, para, para estos grupos, uh, tiene que tener una especialidad ma mayor que puedan traer soluciones. Pero también en Amazonía tiene una mirada mayor de la, uh, de la comunidad internacional. En el, acá en el sur de Brasil, en los otros biomas, los indígenas tienen sí poco acceso a, a la tierra, uh, pero están muy... Um, Uh, con redes muy fuertes y, y, y tienen necesidad de recibir los alimentos y todo, pero de una cierta manera, y yo, yo tengo el conocimiento de los guaraníes, ellos tienen una buena relación y, que, y de los guaraníes de sur de Brasil, pero también de Argentina y Paraguay. Entonces hay una circulación también que, que haga con que estos grupos están a 500 años Uh, en relación con nuestra sociedad, mantenga su lengua, mantenga sus semillas e intente mantener sus, uh, su forma de vida. Ellos sí necesitan de parcerías, claro, y, y ahora los jóvenes uh, indígenas de una forma general tienen trabajado mucho con la producción de videos, videos de, sus, de su alimentación, videos de su, de su vida, de sus etnias, entonces, me parece que fortalecer los jóvenes indígenas uh, con los valores de su tradición es muy importante. Hay, hay ejemplos de, de jóvenes que fueron uh, uh, presentar sus videos en no Nueva York y estas cosas son muy uh, importantes para la valorización de la cultura en general. Entonces, me parece que son buenas pistas para el trabajo de valorización, por ejemplo, de de, la, de su alimentación. Bueno. So, are the, the, the young people, uh, does it, is it working? Showing them the importance and, or do they still want to go to the city? How? Bueno, lo que conozco son más los guaraníes y, y ellos tienen una organización interesante porque tienen algunas aldeas que quedan uh, ad, dentro de las florestas y, y tienen otras aldeas más próximas de la ciudad y ellos sí trans, pueden transitar. Entonces van se organizando por estos intereses uh, y, y con eso consiguen uh, vender su artesanía porque viven mucho de la artesanía para la mayor parte de los indígenas, vender la, lo, lo que se come no, no es posible porque es sagrado, entonces no van a vender. Y esto fue una, uh, una contradicción de las políticas de desarrollo territorial que querían ponerlos como productores de alimentos, pero ellos no van a vender. Tienen que pensar en, en otras lógicas. Es, es muy uh, instigante uh, estas, estas cuestiones. Gracias. Excuse me for my silence, trying to get back on uh, screen sharing and uh, connection issues. Sorry about that, uh, Yankees. Thank you for taking. Um, taking it's okay. <clears throat> so Gabriela just shared that it's very interesting uh, that the um, through videos, right? They are going to show um, trying to empower these indigenous. Uh, communities and show the young people the importance of uh, conserving the traditional practices and culture. Amazing. Thank you. Would you mind letting me in because you have the host uh, oh, okay, at the moment? 
Thank you. Thank you, Marina, for the extra articles. Okay. So, so I think that's... one curious thing to mention it's that we like these exotic fruits we don't have uh, widely available in every part of Brazil. So for, for instance, okay. if you take acai, the, the acai berries, they are grown in the north uh, part of Brazil and then distributed along the country. So this crop, it's only grown there, <laughs> basically. Uh, and then they processed it and, and distribute along, ar around the country. And it happens with other types of fruits as well. So we don't have access to a big variety be because of it, it's not grown in, in anywhere. Uh, it has to be in specifically um, environmental conditions or biomass or ecosystems. <laughs> yeah. But th these fruits are available for just regular consumers in those areas, right? Uh, not like I would say the the sample one. It's acai. You can find almost anywhere in Brazil. Mm -hmm. But other fruits, I, I wouldn't say it's that widely available. Yeah, they can be like in frozen fruits, <laughs> like, but not like fresh ones. Uh, I actually mean if the the the, the crop is grown in, in, a, in a on a place where uh, it's uh, uh, suitable, the local community is always. As access oh, definitely. To what, yes. What, yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so in Holland, the... sometimes that's not the case. Really? They are okay. selling to the supermarket, and then you have to to buy from the supermarket. There's actually not a channel in which we can buy directly from the producer, although it could be your neighbor. So mm -hmm. it's if it's very interesting. Thank you. So one other thing that I think it's uh, it's good for you to know. So with the pandemic and all the political issues that we are having in Brazil, um, our currency, it's actually dropped in value and like dollar uh, raised in value, basically. So for agricultural producers, they were selling uh, the crops um, abroad and the prices increased internally. So for instance, rice and soy and like products that are like really cheap they with the pandemic since the demand has grown uh, and the the farmers uh, could get more money uh, selling exporting exporting their products uh, they started doing this and the 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 prices in brazil rose basically so okay double and triple the price so this is just another data for okay. you Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I was wondering, another question is how can we recognize and reward food producers that are delivering a higher nutritional value? So I guess it's more about not only nutritional value, but also uh, sustainability or uh, that are uh, have good practices in uh, biodiversity. So maybe the first question would be, if you feel like the, the producers or the farmers, if, are they a vulnerable group or how's their economic status? Or do they get a fair price for their work or is it like a very tough um, existence to be a farmer in Brazil? Yeah, 
Hi. To uh, be honest, I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Hi. This is, hi. Uh, hi. This is Mahender here from India. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, Jan. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to our session. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hi, Please, Marina. Uh, Please tell, where, where are you now? Good. I'm in Hyderabad, India. In India. Okay. Yeah. How did you, uh, what's your connection to uh, this session? Actually, Ivani and me are uh, part of one common platform, SOL uh, LB group. Okay. Very nice. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice, nice connecting with you. Very nice of you to have joined us. We actually are talking about, we're doing a research project. Mm -hmm. It's called Nutrition for All, and it's trying to uncover nutrition inequalities around the world. And now we're yeah. doing the, the qualitative part uh, in these sessions, trying to undercover, uncover valuable insights from uh, bottom up. So mm -hmm. in this session, we're focusing on Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are here with uh, Julia, who's in uh, my team for the research also. She's actually leading the conversation, but she has some uh, connection issues. And, uh, and Marina, who's actually, uh, yeah, maybe you can introduce yourself, Marina. Uh, hi. Uh, or just where you I'm are. In... Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in Brazil <laughs> and I just okay. came uh, for the session basically because a friend recommended it to me. <laughs> okay, okay, Marina. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Mahenda, actually, yeah. I have an um, insight for you. We are running mm. these dinners at different locations and we will have a session in India uh, mm. next week. Um, okay. with a few people running the event from Bangalore, but it will be also online. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can, uh, if you drop us your uh, contacts, we can also um, send you any information about that dinner. Uh, definitely, definitely. I'm, I'm dropping that in the chat box. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Thank you. And still, please feel free to stay with us more than welcome to, uh, to be part of this conversation as well. I just wanted to let you know that we also have something which is more um, related to your locality. Um, Yankees, may I please ask you to make me a co-host? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, if, uh, what, what Jan was asking, and but when I just joined, uh, that, that's a uh, uh, universal question, what I felt. And uh, since he, the, the discussion was confined to Brazil. I so I'm, I'm a mute spectator, but otherwise uh, uh, the query what he raised is very much valid. Uh, I, I presume very much valid for across the globe because people who are following uh, are especially the farmers because we work with the farmers community at a community level, in fact. And we see that uh, uh, but when they are following the biodiversity integration in farming or even natural farming or aiming at residue free farming, uh, uh, you have this uh, basic uh, question coming from uh, the key stakeholders of the ecosystem on the authenticity and the validation part. And, and uh, that's where the certifying agencies are not 100% uh, efficient in terms of uh, you know uh, tracing or the traceability on not where it is grown what what is more important is how it is grown so so that how it is grown part is not been able to trace so far so so when when you're talking about nutrition aspect yeah uh, we we need to have a clarity on how it is grown then then you know it is easy for us to you know uh, say whether you know what what is the what are the residue levels and we, we yeah. have a complete record so basically so if we know how it is grown then i think we don't need any certification so basically no, we can. definitely yeah. i agree i was actually also wondering marina so if you feel like that in brazil the the farmers are getting a fair price for the effort they're putting in 
or are they a vulnerable group? Um, in how, how is their their power compared to the big industry? Can they be uh, independent? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I don't no? know the answer. Okay. No, um, I guess they're like one of the problems with agriculture is the middlemen. Um, so, but I don't know if that's the case for Brazil. <laughs> but it's not like the farmers you speak to on the markets that they are complaining about their their life or. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not an easy job. Like if you grow the crops and also you have to sell it in the market every day in early morning, it's not an easy job. But mm. in, in terms of uh, the in terms of price, uh, I don't have the insights, unfortunately. If, no. if anything, if I, if I tell you anything, I, I would lie because I, I don't have the data <laughs> to tell you. I, I'm trying yeah. to find some data for you. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, well, in in this phase, <laughs> we're especially uh, also interested in your point of view, so not not uh, per mm -hmm. se the, the data, but to mm -hmm. just give a little bit insights in how things are in the Netherlands. I think we had uh, riots for like a couple of months ago, uh, and like uh, thousands of farmers went to the government for two weeks on the highway, on their uh, tractors uh, and their, their farming vehicles, and they blocked all the highways because they are so fed up with all the regulations and they have to change all the time, but and there's just no way for them to make money with a regenerative or a, a good farming practices, sustainable farming practices. So it was just, uh, something I was wondering, but uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, How, do you can, have, oh, sorry, they, go ahead, Mandan, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they can get a fair price, Jan, if uh, F2C, that is farmer to consumer connection is enabled. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so th that's where they can get the fair price. And uh, yeah. farm, then, then farmer need not to fight for anything. So yeah. you can purely concentrate on the growing part and uh, that is directly sent to the consumer without any middle layer. Yeah. Then, then, yeah. then he will absolutely get his fair price. And, and that's what we are working here in India as well. And we are enabling that uh, through both uh, offline and the, the online as well. We are creating a farmer's marketplace where uh, farmers are registering themselves. So it's a kind of an Amazon of farmers, what we are creating here. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting because Marina told us that there are a lot of uh, direct relationships between the producer <clears throat> and the consumer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's why they are a little bit more independent than, for example, farmers in uh, Western Europe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay. And what do you by any chance have an idea how uh, farmers are subsidized in Brazil? Because in uh, in Europe, especially, um, uh, any kind of support they got is based on the size of their land, mainly, and not necessarily on the uh, labor intensity of the, their growing practices, uh, which makes a difference for, especially for those who are trying to do regenerative agriculture and so on, to make um, a sustainable living out of it yet for those who, who have a bigger land and maybe do mono, um, a monoculture production, um, it is pretty decent, uh, the living what they can make out of it. Um, do you know that in Brazil there is any uh, governmental support what farmers would get and how is it um, defined by any chance? <laughs> To be honest, I, I have I, I don't have any like specific information to give you, and that's why I was kind of like, okay, what I'm gonna talk in this in this chat. No, but, but I know that, for instance, like bee crops, like soy, and like that they are exporting. They of course they they get a lot of uh, government incentives and taxes, but I don't have specifics around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Gabriela um, also mentioned something about that um, at the beginning. 
how um, how the uh, the political like how the government is pushing towards um, these um, um, monoculture production. Um, and I just um, let me um, double check when are we connecting with the um, with the other group. And Maybe um, uh, Julia, you can ask these questions to Caio because he was working in agritech in Brazil, so he probably yeah. have the insights in the industry, so he has the answers for you. Well, he will clearly uh, get an email from me after tonight, <laughs> uh, especially thanking him that um, he made you come to our session. And I really hope that we didn't scare you away with some of the questions which are more specific to, to agriculture no, and so on. Because, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. because I was disconnected. Did we lose Gabriela? Um, at, yes, uh, she, at she has a young child. She sent me the chat. Okay. Hi, Ivani. Hi, Julia. Can you see me? Yes, I can. How is it going over there? It's going amazing. Great discussions. We are like doing all the questions all together and then coming back to them and then going further and deeper. It's it's been amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So I have a I have an idea. Um, I would like to do the Mentimeter, all three of them now, while we are connecting okay. with you. So if I am showed on the, the screen, I will share the, um, the QR codes and here with the, the audience in the chat, the link. So we would go through those three questions and at that okay. stage, I would actually say goodbye to you and we will wrap okay. up here on the online session and then we reconnect okay. tomorrow to share the insights with each other, okay? Perfect. Sounds All right. Good. So, would you mind telling your um, guests that I will share the, uh, three QR codes after each other, and they should scan okay. it with their phones and answer the questions. What is popping up? Perfect. Starting now, right? Now, exactly. Thank you. Great. All right. So we have prepared three questions. Um, what we ask the wider audience and these questions will be also um, asked at every dinner at every location uh, over the next two weeks. I am posting the link for you in the chat um, so you don't need to scan the QR code on the screen. It's more for the, the dinner participants. Um, give me a moment. Here is the first, uh, first link. Thank you. 
So for my online audience, I will actually paste the other two links as well uh, in the chat already. So you can, while we are waiting for the others to, to submit their... Um, oh, sorry about that. I No one told me that actually the previous link, I only send it to yeah, Yankees. So this was the first link. And uh, let me share with you the other one. Uh, one second. I am with you in a second. Just one second. Is everyone okay with the QR code? Okay, I will change the QR code in a second. I just want to show the results first. Uh, what came out? One second. Okay. So now. We have a few, I hope that everyone scanned. If we, everyone scanned the QR code already, can I switch the screen to the results? Okay, so let me change here. So these are the main outcomes currently based on what our culture pretty big word in the food <laughs> related to nutrition, of course, very nice. And then uh, we have a few words in uh, Portuguese, but I might have um, challenges with. And then it's life, I really like that. And culture as well, organic food, fresh food, real food. Oh, I, that's, a, that's an interesting... Uh, um, I would like to know what exactly is meant by real food. What is real food? Is that organic? Is that um, something that grows next to you? Um, so very interesting points. Um, Evie, shall I go on with the, with the second, um, second QR code? Because we got around eight answers. I don't know if they are still working on the, on the current one, but I no, can already share. Yeah, we are good to go. All right. All right. So then let's go back to this one and scan the next QR code. I, for you guys online, I already put the, the second link in the chat is the one for this, um, um, this question about how much do you consider the nutritional value of food when you shop? Okay, I'm just waiting for a few more results to come in and then I will show you the results oh interesting well, i like to have the one who sees the results first and i can reveal uh, them in a second Okay, so look at this. Uh, Evie, you have a lot of guests who actually look at their the nutrition. Or that nutrition is a very important uh, factor in their uh, food choices. Amazing, quite a lot. We don't have anyone who actually is not considering nutritional value while um, they are shopping. That's very interesting to see. Very good, very good. Okay. And now the final one, just one second. There we go, the third question.
Okay, and for um, everyone online, um, that's the third link uh, I posted in the chat, and that's about the factors what are the most critical to enter nutrition for all, based on your opinion. All right, here are the results and we are still, I assume we still have a few answers coming in. Affordability and of healthy food and distance. So the access to healthy and safe food is um, scoring very high. Infrastructure, education, of course. So I feel um, distance here has um, has a lot of significance, and that kind of makes me think about the conversations what we had. That yes, Brazil has a huge, huge biodiversity, but um, certain things are grown in specific regions. So that doesn't mean that it might be accessible to to everyone all over the country. So maybe this is something what we could also take into consideration. And then I am not surprised to see education um, coming up. And oh, that Marina, actually, I have a question, um, but I'm pretty sure you will be um, uh, able to, to answer. Do you guys, so in, in school, and here I mean uh, primary school education, high school, is there any part of your education where you learn about food and how is it grown? How does it land on like how what does it take to have it on your plate is there is it is there any element of uh, public education about uh, food and um and this nutrition um for example marina we don't have a uh, hi can you hear me yes yes julia can you hear I, me? I can hear yes. you we don't have specific classes uh uh, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay, we don't have specific classes uh, uh, about the where the food can come from. Um, so I, I would say at least I didn't have <laughs> in my childhood. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, and you ask it about what is style, like what what kind of food people sell in canteens and in, in, mm -hmm. in schools. So usually they get a lot of, I would say not healthy, <laughs> unhealthy snacks. So it's a lot of soda, um, industrialized oh, really? products. Yeah. So, so if you want something um, more healthy, you have to bring from home. Let's say. So it's a lot of bread and things with, um, wheat and uh, so so yeah uh, i would say it's not super healthy what you can find in these canteens do you remember what uh, gabriella said about the 30 percent of the municipal schools i are... don't remember sorry huh? <laughs> no but, yeah okay that's it was thing. something about the distance, so how the procurement of the food was in the school canteens, no? Yeah, I know that 30% 30, 30 of the public controlled schools are closely connected to familiar farmers. Mm. But I, yeah, we should check again with uh, Jose. Yes. <laughs> the best, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. to be honest i was not paying attention in everything she was saying i was trying to find more resources for you okay thank so, you okay. Really well, uh, marina you've been a, a great savior uh, in also trying to uh, translate some of the things so thank you so much for all your your uh, effort 
and input. Yes. I think, uh, no, it's my pleasure. Your insights are, are, are very valuable. So, uh, yeah, praise yourself. Yes. yes. And uh, Maria, I see you are still connected. So I assume you at least could listen um, during the conversation. Uh, please, if you have anything to add to the questions, uh, and once you have a bit more time because you are not sitting in a class, um, if, you, if you want, please feel free to um, send us your um, input. Evie? Oh, no. All right. Okay. I wanted to finally say goodbye to our uh, physical um, partner, like in-person um, uh, dinner. Uh, so let me just put here uh, my email address in the chat. Um, and if you have anything uh, what pops into your mind, any initiative what you hear about, or there was something what we didn't discuss widely during the conversation, please feel free to, um, to reach out. And uh, uh, please be ensured that um, this research is going, so we are finalizing the results from the dinners and the publishing our results towards the end of November, beginning of December. And then it will be uh, at one point also um, published on, to a wider audience. And, uh, and then we should have your um, contact details and um, share it with you as well. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all of your contribution, and I really hope that uh, it was also interesting for you. And uh, and I am very curious about all the translation what we will hear because I did try to concentrate and understand everything from what Gabriela was saying. Obviously, without speaking the language, it's still a tiny bit challenging. I grasped, uh, gra grasped the, the context at least. And, um, and yeah, in this case, I, I would like to thank you. So if you, um, it, we can call this as a, our virtual dinner uh, came to an end. And I will just stay here to, to finally say goodbye to the, to the team in Porto Alegre. And um, yeah, uh, let's stay in touch. And thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Marina. Yeah. Thank you, Mahanda, for tuning in. See you in the India session. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, in fact. Okay, and great. that was a good point, that 30% of schools connecting to the farmer, that, that's really a good, good uh, you know, initiative. And yes, I think uh, we, we will also look forward to it, maybe once the schools are open in India. That, that, that sure. would be a yes, good cool. connect. <laughs> Yeah. So oh, thank nice you guys. You. I hope you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, and also if you need anything else from my side, if I can connect you with anybody else here, just let me know. <laughs> okay. And uh, thank so, you. so nice. <laughs> okay. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thank nice you. talking to you. Bye. Bye. Have a good nice evening. Bye. 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 So Yankees don't leave. I just quickly say bye and then we can also finish the session. I don't know, are they listening to us right now? I'm a tiny bit confused. Ivan, Ivi, oh. are you are we are we on loudspeaker? No? Oh, okay. I think I'm not uh, it, it says recording. But I think you're recording now, right? Yeah. All right. No. Okay, well, I don't don't see the the stop button for later. It's next to the share screening. There should be a pause and stop button. Okay. Can you make me? Um, uh, can you make the other Julia um, yeah. co-host? Host? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Julia. So. We just wanted to say like goodbye. Um, that's good. I'm happy to hear that. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say, we actually just had someone joining. We will quickly talk to her, but then we kind of uh, closed the session online. Um, so have fun for the rest of the evening. And uh, hi, Paula. And, um, and then uh, let's connect tomorrow to, to figure out um, the outcomes and how can we get the insights from uh, Porto Alegre. Perfect, can't wait. Thank Bye, you, Julia. talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.
Paula, I am so happy that you joined. So nice to see you again. But you just came. Yes, a bit too I'm late. too late. <laughs> I, I got confused with timing. I don't know. Like I have been jumping in and jumping out in different sessions. But yeah, too late. Too too late. Unfortunately. Um, Oh, but you know what, Paola, now that I have you here, I just quickly introduce you, Jan Kies. He is my um, um, team member for this research initiative that we are running. And uh, just to give you a bit of an insight, um, we are researching nutrition inequalities and gaps worldwide. And today in Brazil is our first dinner, which is part of our research, to collect um, local insights about the food system in Brazil, um, how are people um, eating, how is uh, knowledge about traditional food practices uh, getting lost, how is westernized diet having an influence on, um, on uh, consumption behavior, and uh, we talked about indigenous fruits as well. Um, so in general, uh, because as I said, we are like now finishing and this is 3 a.m. our time. So I think I feel like I cannot even talk in full sentences anymore. Um, so, but what I wanted to ask you, if you have um, time over the next days, I might uh, want to interview you. How would you feel about that? Because we are looking for also uh, like grassroots yeah. initiatives who are working towards uh, nutrition availability for uh, Brazilians. Okay, yeah, I would I would love to. I mean, I'm I'm calling in from Medellin, uh, so I'm part of the social gastronomy movement. But we also have, and it's actually exactly yeah. our topic, right, with Platos y Fronteras in Colombia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember because so Yankees, uh, Paula was actually talking on the Food for Earth Day when we had the marathon. Oh, really? Okay. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, so nice. So uh -huh. it's really nice because it's very special because three weeks ago we launched our nutrition, nutrition, our first nutrition education lab in one of the communities really? and we're creating now like a um yeah different nodes like uh, nodos of, of uh, education uh, nutrition education so it's actually a perfect and i'm so i'm so a little bit sad that I'm, i jumped in late um but yeah i would love i would love Thank to you. start talking with you and i think uh, a lot of organizations who have received the fund the solidarity fund from the social gastronomy movement they are working on nutrition education as well so i i think it can be of great great interest if we start uh, the conversations and having the conversation mm -hmm. all right paula i think let me just double check but i think i have your email address from the last time yeah um and then i would reach out to you yes uh paula polmeyer uh, at gmail.com right yep. <laughs> that's it Perfect. Okay, so I will uh, I will reach out tomorrow after I cut some sleep, and uh, maybe we find time to to have a private chat with you. Listo, Julia, Bianchi, uh, a pleasure, and everyone who has been here in the call as well. And uh, yeah, we catch up. Uh, in Looking forward to your uh, insights. Looking Thank forward. you so much for uh, helping out. Thank you. Un abrazo. Bye bye. Have a nice okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Um, Yankees, so did you make Yeah, I'm not a host other... anymore. You're so, not a host. No, no, because my connection uh, dropped out. So the ones... I am the host. Okay, okay. Uh, let me make the other Julia the host. Make host. Want to change? Yes. You are the host now. And stop recording.